Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Kodak RetNet. Uh, it's a Type 012. Some of the earlier ones are kind of hard to tell apart. This particular model is from 1948 or 1949 or thereabouts. It was made uh, up until 1951. It is a folding viewfinder camera made by Kodak AG in Stuttgart, Germany. This was the first post-World War II Retinet. Um, in general, they were the less expensive uh, version of the Kodak Retinas. As far as I know, these were all viewfinder cameras, where some of the ret Retinas, particularly the later ones, uh, had range finders. This one has a Schneider Riomar, a 50mm f4.5 lens. It's a coated lens. The coating is actually pretty decent and in good shape. Uh, it's a three element lens. It's front cell focusing. Uh, the serial number on this lens indicates that it was made in 1951. So this one was probably near the end of the production run of this specific model of Retinat. Has the Prontor S shutter. Uh, goes from one three hundredth of a second to one second plus bulb and this is again a later Prontor S. The ones with these features uh, with the X-Sync and a delay function self-timer. Um, that's more like the ones that were later uh, labeled SV. The frame counter and you have to manually set it after you load the film this counts up. I had a manual for a later version of this originally, and it said it counted down, but this one does not. And later I did find a PDF of the manual specific to this one. The shutter button and the cable release, see if you can see it okay, they actually move this bar from the body that works the shutter release on the shutter mechanism itself. The double exposure prevention is in the body. It's linked to uh, this cogged piece that is moved by the film advancing. So it's a little bit strange. The double exposure prevention is actually preventing the shutter switch on the body, um, but it, that is actually tripping the shutter switch on the shutter. So. To work it, you do have to wind it, and it's not going to work right now because there's no film in it. And then you still have to cock the shutter on the shutter, and then it's ready to go. And it won't fire right now because of the double exposure prevention. It's pretty straightforward uh, in use um, to open it, to open the bellows portion. You press this button on the bottom and then flip it out and it locks and then to close it there are these dots on the top and bottom of the lens board you just push those guys in and it's ready to fold. One thing that's nice uh, because it's front self focusing things aren't moving in and out so you don't have to remember to set this guy to infinity focus to be able to close it. A lot of the old uh, folding code actually had to do that. I got a pretty decent kit with this guy um, I got the case with the strap, and it's one of those where it has like kind of a short hand strap, and then the strap strap straps into the short strap. Uh, like a lot of old cases, the leather broke here, but the rest of it's in good shape, so that'll be pretty, pretty easy to repair. I think I'll stitch that guy back together. Got a yellow filter uh, made in Germany in the original case. And I get the box from what I believe is the original purchaser. Uh, it says, made in the U.S. zone of Germany. So that tells you this was shortly after World War II. And then uh, it's labeled with the purchaser, Sergeant Pinot. I think I'm saying that right. If it's like Renault, like the car or the guy. Um, anyway, I did a little bit of research. And if I found the right guy... The man who bought this camera in Germany um, was a major, was a sergeant at the time, uh, was awarded the Bronze Star for service in World War II, 
uh, retired as a sergeant major and sadly died in 2021. But he obviously took care of stuff and he seemed like quite a guy just from what I've been able to find online. I don't know him or his family or anything. I just thought it was cool to be able to track down the original owner of this camera. Um, I took this out. I did a walk around uh, with a friend of mine whose Signet 35 I had borrowed. He's been wanting to shoot that. So we did a little walk around on Canyon Road in Santa Fe and had a lot of fun shooting some Tri-X. Then I finished out the roll here at home. I'm still waiting to get the film from him to process his pictures, but mine came out pretty good. I was worried about the 300th uh, of a second being the top speed, but they came out okay. This guy stops down to what's labeled as F-16, but I have a feeling if you slam this guy all the way to the end, it might be stopping down a little bit more than that because I tended to underexposure rather than overexposure. Um, and if anything, an old shutter is going to get slower. So anyway, I think I was stopping down more than it shows. So this won't actually fire right now because of the double exposure, but I'll show you these pictures and get on to the next camera, try and get caught up. And I will see you then.